Hello and welcome. Hopefully you can hear me A-OK. -okay. If you can't, let me know. Otherwise, uh, this is your Saturday night. And do you know what we're doing? We are painting. Why are we painting? Because, well, that's what I like to do. I mean, I like to paint and I like to draw and I like to do so many other things, but, you know, this is just an extension of uh, what and who I am. So we do have captions on, should you want them, should you need them. We are here. Welcome to my studio. Uh, I'm just going to jump right in because I have a lot of things to do. I have a lot to do, and frankly, there's no time to mess about. So I have some things to say first. I talk often about how I am a storyteller, about how I'm an artist, about how I have things to impart. Let me get this, because I'm, I'm actually starting uh, kind of like last week with a whole bunch of stuff on my canvas. That's what we're going to work off of, a bunch of stuff on the canvas. But let's just get going. I'm not going to uh, stand on ceremony. I want to have something here from the get-go. And I'm using actually a mix of uh, decoupage. Ooh, as I get it all over my hand. I'm working with a mix of uh, decoupage and a kind of um, neutral semi-beige. But let me talk to you about stories for a minute. Because I think that's a really important thing, and I really should get it out of the way from the get-go. When it comes to stories and the stories that I tell, oftentimes um, they're what could be considered uncomfortable. Now this is not a bad thing. Let me get that right out of the way from the get-go. The stories I tell are uncomfortable, but that doesn't mean it's bad. They're uncomfortable in the way that things should make us uncomfortable in life. Oftentimes, we have this notion that uh, if something makes us uncomfortable, it's bad. And that's not entirely untrue. I mean, things that make us uncomfortable can, by definition, end up bad. They can end up, well, uncomfortable. You know, they... They have something to them. They have a grit and a tangibility that is unignorable. But do you know what discomfort also does for us? Discomfort also introduces us to things that we shy away from. I know that last bit. You know, that's pretty obvious, right? The uncomfortable if we shy away from it. Of course we do. What else would we do but turn away from that which leaves us feeling not quite right? But the uncomfortable actually has a great deal of value. It can remind us of what we value. And that actually is probably the greatest power of the uncomfortable. To remind us of our values. I am... And actually, uh, so I'm going to talk for 
I'm going to go on a little tangent for a moment. Someone who read a lot of my books early on um, in my career, a lot of, well, not, I actually won't say even in my career, but someone who actually read a lot of my work when it was still pretty new, when it was still blossoming, mentioned a term. And that term was controversial literature. <clears throat> and she used this in reference to the work I do, my stories, what I create, what I write. Controversial literature. And at first, I was a little upset by the notion that what I did was controversial. I was put off by it. That I was somehow giving something that didn't make people feel good. I think that's normal, you know. When someone sees what you create and then they give you their opinion, sometimes that opinion can strike you in a way that makes you unhappy. But then I really kind of took some of that to heart. I considered what that word meant. Controversial. And then I compared it to what I actually made and what I was trying to do. And the truth of the matter was, I was making things which by their nature were controversial. It wasn't a bad thing be reminded of what I did. It wasn't a bad thing to have someone point that out. If nothing else, it was what I needed. Honesty. And a type of honesty that not a lot of people sometimes are willing to give you. I still struggled with it. The, the idea that I was doing something somehow distasteful or as if it wasn't good. But there was actually a lot to glean from that honesty. I create controversial literature. And then it really came home. The idea that what I was doing wasn't for everyone. Not just my stories, but my art and my films. They weren't made to be consumed by everyone. They were dark and brooding and self-reflective. They were everything that most people kind of try to not access. And I don't, I use a lot of generalities, so I'm not going to defend it. Uh, if, if something I say actually when I talk bothers you, 
take the time to really think about it. No matter what it is, take the time to really think about it. Take the time to really breathe it in. To really understand what I'm saying. Because in telling what is fundamentally my own story, my own experience, I do leave certain people out of that equation. And the thing is, they're not left out because of, like, malice or some sort of intentional slight at a single individual. They're left out because that's not who it's for. They're left out because... They weren't the audience that I was making my work for. And that's okay. Let me be really implicit in this. I think it's perfectly okay to make something for a specific audience. And I may not know, I might not know how to um, describe the audience I make for. But I know what I'm making. And in that regard, I also know what I'm not making. And I'm not making excuses for me. It can be really easy to make excuses for yourself. for myself. What I want to do is I want to tell my stories. I want to leave my mark. But what is my mark? What is the thing I'm giving to all of you. What is the shape of it? What is the... truth of it? What keeps me up at night? That last thing that I just said... <coughs> can actually be an unbelievably difficult thing to deal with. What keeps you up at night? What keeps you going the next day? makes what we do seem important. I don't 
don't get me wrong. I know that what I have to say, you know, to some people is not going to be as important as it is to me. I know that the weight I give my work is greater to me than many other people. I know that at the end of the day, I'm not making it for everyone. I'm making it for me. it for those of you who join me on these amazing journeys. I'm making it for a moment like this, where we slowly pull the reality we're looking for out of the one that we live in. I do sometimes think a lot about me. What I'm making, what I'm doing. I'm doing it. That's a hard thing, thinking about why you do something. You know what else is a hard thing, though? Not doing something that's important to you. Not doing something because, oh, maybe it doesn't feel right. Or maybe it shouldn't feel right. Maybe it should feel uncomfortable. Which brings me right back to where we started. Some of the things that I make are uncomfortable. They leave people in a state of uncertainty. They leave them wondering why. They leave them asking why. And I don't think I ever want you to stop asking why. I think if anything, I want you to ask why more often. As I work on this weird ala prima, don't get it twisted. This is this is ala prima at its finest, finest, finest. <clears throat> this is art unbound. And that's what I'm here for. I don't know how that looks on the screen. I'm actually going to take a quick peek. Actually, I think I'm getting across like what I'm doing. I think I'm getting it across.
And isn't that what we should do? Get across what we actually intend? Kind of. Building up our own. Creative process. Whatever that might be. put a whole bunch of dark in this hair before I lighten it up again. But it's actually going it, to, it's going to make sense. It's all going to make sense. And even if it doesn't, I don't care. Because, I don't know, I feel good about what I'm doing. I should feel good about what I'm doing. It has value to me. It has value to me. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to make a mess. should make a mess when we're being creative. So that's something I'm going to be doing here. I'm going to make a mess. Oh, but I like to make a mess. I like it. And I'm working with a number of different things. I'm working with uh, decoupage and acrylic paint. Now, one of the reasons I'm using decoupage is I, I want a certain thickness and coverage. So that's actually what I'm applying right now. You know, just to make this pop a little bit more. And I want pop. and I want thickness and I want texture and I want color and I want so much to grab you. I want this to be a highly textural piece. But here I am, I'm already losing focus again, right? Right. But I don't care if I lose some focus. Because I'm doing something I like. Sometimes I come into these paintings with a lot of unnecessary planning and unnecessary building. A lot that's unnecessary. You know what isn't unnecessary? Layering on tons of paint to achieve a desired look.
as I do this, I mean, it's going to get real messy. But it's also going to slowly just become what I wanted it to be. I'm going to lose a little detail on my figure here for a minute, uh, but it's going to make this all the better. Honestly, just that there alone. Like, I really like this. This is good. This is achieving something. This is getting somewhere. Sometimes you gotta tear everything down to make it work. So that's what I'm going to call this. I'm going to call it tearing it down to make it work. So I'm actually going to cover up some of the figure that I created. Uh, I want like some of this pink down here. Well, it's more like a fuchsia, but when I get to uh, the upper layers again, it's really going to pop nice. Get some of this thalo blue in here. So we have purples and blacks and this thalo blue and this fuchsia. And, you know, there's, I could come up with reasons why I'm doing this, but instead I'm just going to do it. drag it through, see if I can't get some of that color underneath here. I'm actually going to leave this one really hyper, um, not hyper. But I'm going to leave it uh, really stylized in a lot of ways. I'm not going to focus on anything like realism. Because my whole idea is um, someone standing in kind of like moonlight. And I think I'm getting that. I think I'm achieving that. And 
as long as I can achieve most of what I'm looking for, I'm going to call that a pretty good win. Because let's be fair, sometimes that's all the win you need. <laughs> didn't 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 see you there. Uh, if I'm not answering, I haven't seen them. That's the best I can come up with. So let's take a look. So yeah, um, I mean, <laughs> oh goodness. Let's see. Let me hop over here. Make sure I'm looking at the right thing. Hey, 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 you know who I am. I love your break. Thank you very much. Sorry, I didn't see that. Uh, I have, I, I'm on a bunch of different chats here, so I didn't see you. Uh, so I'm going to call that uh, my bad. My bad. I'm going to claim my bad. Uh, it is a... That is one of the only problems with being on four platforms at the same time, uh, is the my bad. And though it doesn't help for the immediate uh, missing of messages, it does do one thing. It's honest. And I think that's worth something. And uh, Slaver, the flavor in the awesomeness of you for being here. I miss things, you know. It's, what do you call that? The creator's problem? Maybe? I don't know. It's a thing. That's what it is. And we're going to call it a thing right now. Nope. Not in the least. Oh, my goodness. All right. So, let's see. How far are we in? Uh, we're half an hour in. I've already made a lot of progress on a single piece. Uh, never YouTube again. Well, you know what? There's nothing wrong with YouTubing, um, except, I, and this is my bad, I never see anyone there, so it's going, and it's recording, and uh, I just don't expect anyone to see it, <laughs> I ever expect anyone to, expect to see anyone in that chat. Wow, words are hard sometimes. But, you know, that's just, that's... That's a me problem. You know what they say? That's a me problem. Thanks for telling you this now. Uh, well, all I'm going to say is, have you ever tried to watch that many different chat areas? <laughs> is is hard like it's hard to watch that many different chats so that's not an excuse so much as I don't know uh, what do you call it um There's words for things. There's words. What's my excuse? I'll tell you what my excuse is. Uh, I don't have a good one. Uh, sometimes we have excuses. Sometimes we don't. 
um, I do not have a good excuse. And honestly, I think it's better to not have an excuse. You know, we can just be honest. We can just be honest of our failings. Like, oh, no, no, I, I, I failed in this thing. Might as well be honest. Spit it out. I tell you what, spit it out. You know, sometimes we just do a bad job. That's the whole. That's the whole of it right there. I did a bad job. We're still friends. <laughs> of course we are. Here in this wonderful space, and of course now I am looking like at both chats. So I had two chats open. I had LinkedIn chat open and I had Twitch chat open. And then the Twitter and the YouTube chat were off to the side. Um, I will get better at this as I go along. I'm going to get better. You know, I've been doing this for a while now. One would assume, reasonably speaking, that I would have figured out how to do some of this, right? One would assume I was capable of handling the responsibilities of a multi-streamer. But you know what the truth is? The truth is, I'm barely capable of uh, handling uh, much. Barely capable. I try. I try to say, like, oh, look at me, I'm a professional. And then there's someone in the comments being like, you're not a professional. I'm like, but I am. I really am. <laughs> oh. oh, my goodness. I can't believe how quickly I've already gone on this. What in the heck? What in the heck? I'm gonna take two seconds. I got a lot of whip words. I got a lot of wet paint here, so we're gonna slow down for a moment. I want to let this settle. I really like moonlit scenes. I jumped right into doing another uh, kind of uh, abstract. It is, and this was just like this is what we're doing. Let's start with some wet paint, and let's go. <laughs> Because sometimes that's exactly what I need to do. Start with some wet paint. Let's go. But let's get back over. Sell it to yourself. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what. If I could sell paintings, ooh, I would be something to contend with if I could sell paintings. That's actually one of the hardest things, um, in my opinion. About being an artist and you know obviously it's not just for me uh, that goes for a lot of artists but it can be really hard to sell your work especially when you don't like do uh, the custom work that a lot of people do because I know a lot of people do um, custom artwork, custom pieces for specific clientele. Uh, and that's a hard idea for me.
Like to do something specifically. Uh, what do I do with all of my collection? Uh, I let it fill my room. I have a room uh, full of artwork. Like I have a bunch that's up on this wall here right now. Like, I don't know. That might give a bad angle. But like I got a bunch on my wall here. But other than that, I have art all over the floor. I have art uh, in stacks. I have stacks and stacks of art. Because, like, I do get shows and things here and there. But I don't sell a lot of art. I make far more than I sell. You know, like, this one from last week. I made it. This doesn't have a buyer. It's just, it's been made, though. Then, you know, like this, like, super abstract, just color piece. You know, I made it. Uh, it's there. I have tons more in this room. And when I say tons, I mean tons. Because I can't even go through all of it. It's just stacked. And I have big pieces and little pieces and all these different size pieces of artwork that are just here. They're just here. <clears throat> and they probably will be for like a long time. Uh, oh, they're all for sale on various uh, places. You know, like, all my work is for sale. So it's not like it's not available for sale. It's just, you know, buyers. And even though the art market is kind of like... niched in a way? You know, people have a lot of artists to buy from. A lot of artists to buy from. So, I'm just one of many artists. Uh, the majority of the money I make in the arts is actually from teaching. And then a small amount from uh, art-related merchandise. And that's, that's just the truth of that. Don't get me wrong, though. Like, I love what I do. And the art itself is just really enjoyable. But from these live streams alone, the amount of art I produce is... Uh, to say the bare minimum, gargantuan. And then, like, I have other pieces. So this one's so big that uh, it's actually on a wooden panel. So let me just start down here. So here's, like, another one I did. And this one's kind of old. I'm just going to slowly move it up. And you can't see much of it just because of the way the light is in the room. Hold on, let me hold it back here so the light will hit it. Boop, 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 boop. Like, some of my art is big. And when it comes to being an artist, you know, I create. I create loads. Loads of art in all sorts of different ways. And, um, I don't know, I'll never feel bad about it either. Not one... Not one little bit. It's like, oh, you just made a new art. You haven't sold in. Yeah, it's kind of hard to show on camera. It's really big. Real big.
But uh, that last painting was actually um, like on a, a wood panel and it's um, a clouded over moon. You know what's really useful about this conversation and where it's gone is this brings me back. Shows off my hand and my fingers. Well, you know, it does. It certainly does. But this brings me back to one of the places I started earlier when I was talking. Um, in relation to, you know, what I make isn't for everyone to begin with. I wish it was, but that's just not the way the world works. We don't live in a world where everyone makes everything for everyone. And I don't create art for everyone. I create art for, I don't know, I can't even say like who it's for, because Trying to figure out, like, who your audience is, number one, is the dumbest fucking thing in the world. Oh, sorry. That's probably going to get me in trouble, get, get me in trouble the way I said that on some platform that I'm on right now. But this whole idea of knowing your audience is one of the m most mind-bogglingly stupid things I have ever heard. Like, I get it, we're supposed to know who we're selling to, but I'm not, I'm not just doing, I don't know, I don't know how to describe what I'm trying to say. I get the idea, and I get the concept behind the idea, and at the same time, I'm just like, why should I know these things? Like, why should this be something that I'm spending? Uh, thank you kindly. Thank you kindly. Let's see. Uh, we have scholar, chef. <laughs> yes. Uh, but, like, we spend all this time developing skills and techniques and crafting the ability to create beautiful things and then someone comes along and says but who are you selling it to who's this for and part of me is just like well it's for whoever the frick likes it who is it for but that actually is a difficult reality for a creator and in you know the modern world that's what I am I'm a creator so it's like who is this for I don't know I don't know how to brand myself It's not something they teach you when you're learning to paint and create art. Those who enjoy what I paint, exactly. But, like, when I was learning how to do this, I wasn't learning how to do it to please someone. I was learning how to do it to express myself. And 
in this like ridiculously counterintuitive this doesn't make sense kind of sense if you don't know who's gonna buy it uh, it's hard to sell Alright, so that's what you do. Not everyone can savor the flavor the way I express myself. Exactly. Not everyone gets it. Not everyone is going to get it. Not everyone is supposed to get it. We don't jump up every day and say, how do I make something that's going to be for everyone? We say, let's speak our mind. Let's share what we got to say, what we got to do, what we're going to put out. Uh, this super simplistic, but ultimately really satisfying art piece, uh, it's not going to talk to everybody. Like, I'm satisfied in the making of it. And it's not going to talk to everybody. And then there's going to be someone coming along being like, well, what's the story? What does it mean? And there I am being like, well, it means I got to paint something that made me happy. It means look at the beautiful, unknowable richness of our world. Some things in our world are just completely rich. So difficult to understand. And here I have this incredibly difficult to see person, like this woman kind of shrouded in shadow, but illuminated by the moon. Her face is almost entirely obscured. No details are visible. We see her figure. We see her hair. We see the moon across from her, but almost directly at eye level. And this dark, brilliant sky. And, and that's enough. Too many people want to silence those they don't like it. I mean, that's true. <clears throat> In a lot of cases, that's, like, very true. They're like, oh, well. What are you talking about? What do you got to say? Well, I don't like that. And because I don't like that, Tell you I don't like it. I think you should know that. I'm going to put white back on there, but I kind of wanted to like, ugh. Leave your portrait alone enough. Well, I'm not done. I'm not done. 
got stuff to do with the moon. Sometimes we gotta finish up what we wanted to do. You know? You're finished. But am I? But am I? Now that, I already think, looks better. <clears throat> already think it looks better, and, uh, you know, that's uh, good enough. So I have to take a quick look to see how this actually looks on camera. Um, <clears throat> it looks better on camera than it really does to me in person. Uh, but I'm fine with that. 100%. A okay with that. You know, it ended up looking good on camera. Um, that's good enough. I gotta do something though. Something I gotta fix. Sometimes you see something and you're like, oh, no. that moment of realization is like, oh, you were so close, but not yet. Some of these moments right here. So close. There we go. All right. Stupendous, magnificent, thank you. So let's get back to, uh, I have a little bit longer to spend with you. So we're gonna talk for two seconds about the stories I tell, the art I create, and the audience that it is for. While I'm at it, I'm going to lock that into place so that it doesn't fall off. Let's go ahead. We're going to stand that up a little bit more. Let's see how that looks. Hopefully that sits in camera okay. And now it's a lot more visible. Uh, I only have one light going in this room, and that's my ring light over here. That is the only light. I actually think it's really nice to be able to paint in low light and, and just see how that comes out. Uh, but, when I create my stories, uh, when I create my art, oftentimes I'm searching to express a feeling or an idea, or sometimes I'm just looking for something. And <clears throat> <laughs> Uh, I don't think the cats will appreciate it nearly as much uh, as, as anyone else. Um, but, yeah, when it comes to the art I create and the stories I tell and even the, the short films I make, I'm oftentimes searching to say something, um, to express something. Uh, this right here, I mean, it doesn't visually give us much. Uh, we see there's a person. We see there's a moon. There's wind. What actually is this? What is it even saying? Why did I bother to take uh, the last uh, roughly an hour to make this? Because I wanted to see it. 
I wanted to see this. I wanted to see what it looked like. I wanted to grab what was in my mind and drag it out and experience it here. And maybe it's not exactly what I saw in my mind, but I saw it and I made it. I'm pretty proud of the fact that I did. And I've signed it. So that's complete now. A little signature, my initials, a month, the year. But I saw a figure Staring at the moon, I felt isolation, and I felt hope, and I felt darkness, and I felt overwhelmed, and I felt like I've looked at this same moon that you see, and I've seen these same dark skies, so there's no stars, there's nothing but you and what you're looking at, what you are viewing. And in the viewing of the thing is the power that it holds. And I saw it in my mind, so I made it on the canvas. And it's not perfect, and I can do better than this. But what I can't do is I can't get back the image, the vision. I can never get that back. That was there, and I grabbed it, and I made it, and I stuck it on the board, and now it's there forever. Or at least unless I decide to cover it up. And I'm just going to keep creating. I'm just going to keep creating and keep putting out I'm going to tell stories that make people uncomfortable, and I'm going to create paintings that maybe not everyone can appreciate in the way I want or intended. And that's okay. That's okay. Now, depending on where you're joining me, there's going to be a link to my website. You can get my art originals, art prints, t-shirts, merch. I have a sketchbook available. I have bags and sweatshirts and t-shirts and all sorts of things. Uh, check it out. See what you feel about it. See how you like it. But uh, I'm going to say good evening and fare thee well. Uh, if you would like more art streams, if you would like more painting, if you would like more drawing, whatever it might be that you would like to have more of, go ahead, make sure you're saying so in the comments wherever you're joining, uh, make sure that you're letting me know as a creator that you want to see more of this, and then we'll get there. But uh, for now, I'm going to wish you all well. Be excellent, my friends. I will join you again very soon. Thank you for being here. And uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend.